Welcome to the Gaming Pulpit. This is your host, All Things Sony. Let me know in the comments what you liked or disliked about the video, and if you liked it, this up would be appreciated. Let us start. So it was leaked that the PlayStation 5 production has jumped from six million to ten million, and I'm going to tell you that there's a lot of implications to this. Um, first and foremost, there was a leaked. Uh, you know, uh, I think Bloomberg leaked that the uh, PlayStation was having or Sony was having trouble keeping up with the whole like, you know, production of it. And it was due to heat sinks and shit like that. And then we heard something like um, Sony was somehow able to um, create a PlayStation five in like four minutes or something or I'm sorry, uh, in one minute or two minutes or something of that nature, like two PlayStation uh, fives in a minute or something of that nature. Um, so now we're here now, that's redundant. Anyway, <laughs> that the PlayStation five production, they're going to do 10 million by the end of the year or by the end of the fiscal year, which is, you know, you got to be very careful about that wording. And why would they be making double? Um, I, I do think that leaks in general, they, they, they have the stage leaks to see, how things how people are feeling consumers are kind of feeling about certain things but to me this is kind of indicative of the price of the playstation uh, 5 see they started off at one point saying that they are going to try to sell value over the actual price and that it was going to you know the consumers is going to like it and and you know the way that i look at it I don't think the PlayStation 5 is going to be that expensive. People were talking about the heat sinks really making a box super, super, super expensive. I don't think so. I don't think so. What I believe is going to happen is that the digital uh, version of the PlayStation 5 is going to be 400 and then the one with the disc is going to be 450 That's what I believe it's going to be. And if they can do that, they can nail it. I still am a little bit concerned about the Xbox um and their pricing for the xbox series s not to be mistaken with x as an x-ray supposedly they're going to make a um a scaled down version of the series x um you know basically so you can play all the games and experience next generation but it be cheaper you know what i'm saying so it's just i don't know how this is going to work are people going to be really cheap and, and actually go with Microsoft or, or are they going to try to look for, you know, quality exclusives, which I'm not saying that Microsoft doesn't have quality exclusives, but I am asking where the fuck is it though? <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, Sony has proved themselves um, with two generations of uh, pristine exclusives. So to me, this kind of looks like they got their, uh, they got it. You know what I'm saying? It looks like right now they fucking nailed it to me. That's what it kind of looks like. Um, whether you like their exclusives or not, which we're going to talk about Ghost of the Shusima, um, they have a certain quality to it. Um, you know, where it's a cinematic flair. Um, the games are not terribly like vaulted with menus and, and systems and things like that. It's kind of easy to get into. Um, I don't know if they have a game that's hard to master other than Bloodborne, which is second party. But in terms of their internals, it's like kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but to me, that's really good news because when they said that they were going to leak, not leak, when they said that Sony was going to come out with a uh, price on their website and they want to put it out on Amazon so you can buy it. I was like, yeah, 6 million is probably going to fly unless the system is like 600. Um, on a side note, people should not be worried about the PlayStation 5 being $600. Sony said time and time again, they were mortified of that. Absolutely mortified. So like I said, them cr increasing it to 10 million and I believe that stunt where there were actual actual reputable um um sites that was stating that sony was going to come out with the price and release date i feel like that was kind of like a, a proxy test to see if people were going to actually go out there and, and and how much it was and they started trending and stuff like that and they're like you know what i think we got it i think we're gonna you know knock it out the park and you know 
um, increase it, ramp it up. But I think the pricing has been altered by that stunt as well. And the pricing is going to be 400 for the disc list version and 450 for the disc version. I'm pretty sure. But let's move on to Ghost of Shusima and their bullshit reviews. People are going to obviously say, <laughs> All things Sony, you haven't played the game, so how do you know if it's a good game or not? Um, I, I mean, I see things, obviously. But I will also say this. I'm not just talking about the reviews. I'm specifically talking about technical reviews, um, i.e. Digital Foundry and, and, and just people and, you know, how they state it. Oh, it's so janky and oh blah 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 and you know it, it doesn't look as good and, and, and there's no inverse kinematics you know his leg doesn't place properly on on the um you know on, on the different elevations of the terrain oh the animations are not like the last of us and stuff like that and just those type of things oh it's a ubisoft game and you know none of them really popped off when Zelda kind of came out with the with the pseudo Udo Ubisoft um, gameplay, um, and then the only thing they had to show for it was basically their systems of fire and wind and shit like that, and maybe you can cut things off. I mean, they have a really good physics system, so I'll say that. But then there's a lot of you know early access games that's kind of like Minecraft that has things of that nature, but it still was similar to Ubisoft. They did the same thing with Horizon Zero Dawn, saying that it didn't offer anything, it was another Ubisoft game, and now that you have Ghost of Shishima, the thing is, like, somebody was complaining about the storyline. Oh, the storyline is this. Like, what, what did you guys want from a storyline, you know what I'm saying, of that nature, of a uh, almost autobiography type situation, you know? Uh, what, what exactly did you want? Uh, the character to be gay, I guess, you know what I mean? It, it, it to be a, uh, a, a LGBT character. What, what did you want exactly from the storyline of Ghost of Shizima? It's 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 not really hitting there. And then how they kind of shit on some glitches that was in the game. I, I saw one review was talking about, oh, there's a bird that typically is supposed to show you a way and then it actually gets caught up in you know uh in a mountain and then and then it disappears or some shit they were saying it's like what game doesn't fucking have glitches you know what i'm saying and then the blatant you know you come at you know the game saying that it's not up to quality in terms of animation of the last of us the fucking last of us is a linear game though and i don't even know why you're comparing it to that you know when they made ghost of shishima they had to make a whole fucking island and then they had to make a competent fucking combat system. So it was like, where the fuck are you getting this? And I, yeah, I'm using the fucking strong language. So I am annoyed. Like, I don't understand reviewers. Like, what are you reviewing it based off of? Um, one reviewer said that it barely, sat, barely has any glitches. And then I'm looking like, I mean, you're worried about his feet can't get placed on a, on a, on the ground like that. But nobody complains when it comes to fucking, you know... The Souls games and how they didn't really innovate and how it's barely any story. People will talk about lip syncing. Have you ever watched a Japanese, you know, dubbed movie? Have you ever seen that before? Like, what are we doing here? I don't understand what's going on. Why? Because you have to chase, you know, uh, they have the regular open world task. The whole thing about the game is the combat system, really. It's in the open world environment and the fact that you can either do stealth or action, or a combination of the two, and it has to be challenging. Uh, you know, maybe there's a patch, hopefully, that makes it even more challenging to the, the soul standard, I guess is what everybody kind of wants it to be. But it's like, those particular games can get away with it. They don't even have fucking lip movement in fucking the Souls games. Barely any fucking lip movement, but nobody complains about it. You take fucking 5.5 po points because of that. And I was reading reviews, they're giving it like 6 out of 10 for what because it's similar to another fucking game like what game isn't and then you give the last of us like tens and shit like that and what's what's your merits there's so many issues which i'll be doing a review soon there's so many issues with the core gameplay of the last of us which blows me away nobody really really mentioned you know what i mean from poor ai and poor companion ai and you know 
Huh. I just I don't I don't even know why you like com I don't know why you compared it to The Last of Us. I just I don't understand it. They're not the same thing. They had the no, I wouldn't even say budget, but they had the time frame to focus on the animations to a pristine level because they don't have to make the environments or systems or day and night cycles or anything the fuck else. Lastly about Ghost of Tsushima is these systems are aging. And the amount of draw distance that they have with the grass and things of that nature is not easy. Period. Period. It's not an easy thing to do. Which blows me away as the people were thinking, oh, well, his laser isn't placed properly on the fucking terrain. Well, in order for them to do that whole, instead of waypoints, the wind guides you type situation, the game... The PlayStation only can calculate a certain amount of calculations. Something had to fucking give. And I'm surprised that tech places like Digital Foundry didn't mention it. You know what I'm saying? You have all those blades of grass moving at once. And everything can move it. Fire also could do, like, display its own light and things like that. It emits its own light. It's not faked in that particular regard. And, you, you know, the draw distance is extreme in that game. From what I can see. And everybody else is stating that as well. And it, the grass. Like when you play The Witcher. The grass and trees stop blowing at a certain distance. Even Horizon Zero Dawn. You know. Um, this one is just way the fuck far out in the horizon. It's still moving. All of that has to be calculated. You can't. You know what I'm saying. They have to calculate all of that. So it just kind of blew me away that. You know. People were really complaining about. His feet isn't lining up with the fucking ground sometimes, or it's not lining up perfectly with the steps, and that it should be at the caliber of, you know, of of the Last of Us Part Two. And I still don't understand how that game can get tens with so many flaws gameplay wise, and in the gameplay loop, even if it didn't have the flaws, cutscene, encounter, puzzle, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, not even puzzles. And it's just cutscenes, encounters, puzzles. Cutscenes, encounter, puzzles. Throughout the whole game, you, you talk about this game being redundant. I, are we serious here? Are we serious? Are we done? Are we through or are we done? <laughs>